you don't have access to abortion. Roe v. Wade overturned. Women are going on a sex strike. I'm saying let's up the ante. All right. Women should only ever have sex under one condition and one condition only. First, the man. I mean, we're not talking about just as nice and takes you on a date, buys you dinner. No, that's worthless. These guys got to step up. What they got to do is make a vow to God. Do you agree with me, ladies? I want to see before any women have sex ever again, the man has to make a vow, a solemn vow to God, and it has to be in front of your family, your friends, and there needs to be legal witnesses involved. And he has to promise in his vow that he's going to love you, not just lust after you. He's going to love you. And when you get pregnant, he promises that he is going to care for those babies, educate those babies, pay the cost of those babies, and support and create a safe family environment. Don't ever have sex until a man makes a vow to you and to God. And you, you better have your family there, your friends, your grandparents, witnesses. I mean, we should probably... You take your, your friend and you make her a person of honor. You know, if she's married, she's like the matron. Of, we call her the matron of honor. If she's not married, we call her the maid of honor. Like she's a legal witness. Like you have your friend stand there. You're like, listen, bub, we are not having sex unless you make this vow. I want my family there. I want my friends there. And I'm going to have my best friend. As the maid of honor, she's going to stand right there next to me when you say this. Because we want everyone to know. And probably, I think the guy, he should probably have, you know, his best friend there. Whoever his, you know, the man that's his best, we could call him best man. Best man, he should be standing right next to the guy when he makes these vows. Because if that guy tries to get out of the vows, his best man is going to have to hold him accountable for that. So I really think this is, I mean, the feminists are going to like this. Okay, so... Women don't have any sex ever until the guy comes. He makes a vow to God and to you in front of family. And it's going to be administered, I think, by a representative of God, like a priest. And he'll be able to do this, oversee this vow and witness it on behalf of God and the state. Okay, so the man, he's going to promise to love you. He's going to promise to never cheat on you. He's going to promise to take care of the babies, raise the babies, provide a home and a household. I mean, he's going to have to totally step up or else you're not having sex. Okay. I'm proposing like something very, very radical here. Not only is he going to promise to love you, never cheat on you, uh, raise your babies. He's going to stay with you. I get this. You're going to make him say this. All right. You're going to say it too, but he's going to say till death do us part. You know, I'm going to go off my shtick here. I'm a Catholic. One of the reasons I'm a Catholic is because we believe marriage, holy matrimony, is a sacrament. It's not an institution of the state. We've seen how that's wrong in America. It doesn't work. It's instituted by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So if you're watching me and you're interested in God and Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, Christianity, the church, I would challenge you to look at the doctrine of matrimony, holy matrimony. Is it up to the state? Is it up to Germany or China or United States to define marriage? Or is it up to God? There are seven sacraments because when Christ instituted the New Testament, he always does things in seven because Christ is God. So when you expect a new covenant, you would expect a sevenfold proclamation. Those are the seven sacraments. But Martin Luther and John Calvin and the Protestants, they say there's only two sacraments, baptism and Eucharist. But my question would be, why would God institute a new covenant and do a two instead of a seven? That's because he did do seven. Matrimony is a sacrament. And so I would just encourage you, especially if you're new to my podcast, pray about that. Think about that. Is matrimony... In ordinance of the state? Is it just some 
good idea that a guy like Taylor Marshall once thought up, right? In this shtick, in this joke? Or was it from eternity past defined and proclamated by God? It's the latter. And once you start to accept that, you'll start accepting more things about the truths of historic Christianity, which we call Catholicism. <laughs>